All right. Day. What day is it, Dom? How many days have you been here? Um, since Wednesday. When is that? Since Wednesday. Yeah. Right there. Left shoulders. Yeah, we'll do that. Hey. Oh wait. Shoot. I can't have that resting on there. It's off there, right? Yeah. It's not on the leather. Okay. Good. That would be bad. Wednesday, you said? Yeah. Focus on you. Focus on me. We'll do this. Wednesday, it's been a week? No. Almost. Six days. Six yeah. days. So what else do you want to get achieved while you're here? What other goals do you have? I feel like the goals I have are mostly achieved. What else? What other goals do you have? Um, so I got my dunk. I would say keep working on technique. For what? For what? Mm -hmm. um, like all my lifts, basically. Okay. So lifting um, technique? That's it. Not get, much. Get your upper body bigger? Yeah. Came out here to get his first dunk, got his first dunk. Yeah. Has no other goals? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That's okay. We're, I, I, can, I can live with that. All right. I'm really brain dead right now. Um, I don't know if you guys know what exposure therapy is, but it's a therapy technique for OCD, and it is, it's, it, technically it's exposure response prevention, but it also works for like PTSD and stuff. Not that I have PTSD. Well, maybe, who knows? But I had to do that, and it is just brutal. It takes up a lot of mental brain power, a lot of energy, and I just don't, uh, I don't like it, but I know it's good for me. So if I seem a little tired, that's why. Um, but I want to talk about kind of where the guys are at right now and give an update. Uh, so basically, Dom, as you guys heard, he's kind of achieved his goals for the week. Yesterday, we worked a lot on his Ole technique. A lot of you guys were asking, like, oh, are, is this like a barbell jump squat? It's not. It is, a, it is still the clean. It's just that you want to have the intent of jumping. Now, you could watch a lot of heavy, heavy Ole lifters and some of those guys won't get their feet off the ground. That's not because they're not trying to um, necessarily do that. I mean, Olympic lifting is weird because Ole coaches coach it differently than what sports performance coaches do. And obviously you would think, oh, well, you should do what the Olympic weightlifting coaches do. And so I take a lot of elements from that because obviously you want to have good technique when you lift. You know, even with squatting, front squat, back squat, I use a lot of the techniques from the Olympic weightlifting coaches that I've worked with because that's their sport. You know, I, I think that there's a lot to be gained, but um, obviously Olympic weightlifters aren't the highest jumpers in the world. And, uh, you know, they might not even be the most powerful without a barbell, meaning like if I said sprint or jump or do something like with just moving their body weight, they're not going to produce the most power, the most wattage, right? With a bar, yeah. I mean, I don't think there's anyone that can produce more power than they can with a, on a barbell, but it's not the same thing. And so you want to cue things that are going to help athletes learn the lift correctly and ultimately achieve, you know, the, the outcomes that I'm looking for. So when I'm doing Olympic lift, the biggest thing I want to see is do the knees move forward during the second pull and are, the, Oh what the? shoot, bro. What are you doing? What do I even do right now? I thought he was going to back it. Yeah, same. Uh, well, that was crazy. <laughs> I don't really have anything to say about that. <laughs> Um, so yeah, the, uh, the big goal is like, are you gonna, are the knees moving forward on the second pull? And if that doesn't happen, and then are you getting a heavy extension, hip extension, knee extension, calf extension? Is this a cop? What is happening right now? I am so confused. Interesting. I don't think it was a cop actually. That was weird. Um, Am I on auto? Oh, shoot. Well, I guess we're just going to film an auto. That's okay. Whatever. I'm being lazy today with that. <laughs> like, the focus is all messed up. See how it's, like, oh, on yeah. the F-stops at 9? I don't really care. I'm just going to leave it. Uh, yeah, so you want to see the knees move forward. You want to see... This opens today or tomorrow, by the way, I think. Is it the 12th? Uh, is it supposed to open the 12th right or the 14th? What day is it supposed to open? I think you said 14th. Ah, oh, darn it. <laughs> but you're going to be here for that. Yeah. Yes. Grand opening. That's um, why I'm here. That's why Dom's here. Dom's here for the grand opening of Publix across the street. This is a big day. I've been waiting for this public to open since I moved in. And other people have been waiting for like a year and a half. Um, yeah, so IQ jump because that usually gets the big outcome, which is the double knee bend and a hard triple extension to happen automatically without me having to cue 
the very complex dynamic movement that is the second pull and double knee bend. If you don't know what that is, definitely look it up. Um, it is super important in a successful uh, Oli lift. I think that it's probably one of the most important things. Here, we'll do this, Tom. How are we doing there? Like that. Yeah. Does that work right there? All right. Yeah. I think it's probably the most important thing uh, for a, a good Olympic lift, a successful Olympic lift. But a lot of people, um, you know, kind of mess it up. They don't, they don't actually achieve that. And if that happens, then I usually have to break it down and, and try my best to fix it. it. It usually happens when guys have learned Olympic lifts in the past and they've learned them incorrectly. If they haven't learned Olympic lifts, then usually I can coach them from ground zero and get them to do a, a natural double knee bend and good second pull and, and pull underneath the bar. Um, if they don't, then you have to cue it. Uh, that doesn't happen a ton, but sometimes it does. For those guys, it's actually a lot harder to learn Olympic lifts. So if you're watching this and you've learned Olympic lifts incorrectly, uh, before you're probably going to struggle to learn them correctly, uh, easily at least. And so what I cue guys to do is when they're in this leaned over, I call it the silverback gorilla position. I cue them to jump out of that position and that naturally uprights their torso, which puts them in a really strong, powerful position, naturally brings the knees forward and you get that big acceleration, that big push off the ground, like you wouldn't a jump, which is why we're doing the lift, right? And so you're never going to get the same jump height that you wouldn't a barbell squat jump that you wouldn't have clean because the positioning is slightly different. The bar is in advance of you, the center of mass of the bar or the, the system, uh, because you're holding a heavy barbell moves the center of mass forward. Even if you keep the bar close, uh, it's just slightly different. But what I like about it is that you have very similar hip and knee sequencing, meaning when you jump, your shoulders are forward. You would agree, right, Dom? And yeah. then you kind of go to vertical, right? What happens in a clean? Your shoulders are forward and it goes to vertical. It's very, very similar. Another, another thing that's really similar, after the first pull, especially on a, you know, compared to a two foot jump, you feel stretch in your hamstring. And when you do good two foot jumping, when you kick out and you see guys like get the split position, I don't know if you necessarily feel this anymore, but if, you're, if you haven't been doing it, you'll feel like a stretch in your hamstring. And uh, that's good, that's what you want. You wanna feel uh, some sort of, I don't know, I'm gonna call it force, like, you should have a stretching sensation there so that you're able to, um, you know, have a, a good, smooth uh, jump where you're able to translate your hips forward and, and use your hips and, uh, and your hamstring to, to your benefit. Oh, I thought he was gonna say hi or something, this guy, you see that? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so that's a big, big focus um, when, it, when it comes to the clean, that's why I coach it that way. So watch my videos on my channel. If you haven't, there's like a video that says how to power clean to jump higher on my channel. It has like 10,000 views. I think if you organize my YouTube channel according to popular, you'll see it. Watch that video. It's really good. It's with Austin Eli, and it does a really good job of demonstrating that. So go there if you need to learn how to do all these. And then you can also watch some of the cueing that I give these guys to perfect it. I would say learning Olympic lifts is one of the most important things, but I would say perfecting Olympic lifting is one of the most important things, and not like an Olympic weightlifter, but like an athlete where you're jumping like hell with the bar, is one of the most important things in the development of my athletes. It's where they really learn how to display power in a different way, uh, and they get more coordinated. I think another big one is sprinting. I think when my athletes get really proficient at sprinting, and they sprint really hard, um, they objectively tend to improve uh, a little bit better and over a longer period of time. If they don't do those two things, I typically see them fall off with the training. They don't enjoy training as much. They don't have as much buy-in. Uh, so I, if you're going to do our training, THB strength, or the training that I write, then you definitely need to perfect those two elements uh, as a part of the training. Have you done a lot of sprinting, Dom, um, in the past? In the past, but not. Like, not of recent? Yeah. Where did you usually do it? Uh, I have trails in my backyard or like in my little mm. neighborhood. People look at you like you're crazy. No, it's pretty hidden. <laughs> you try to hide. Yeah. I used to do it on my street when I was a kid. Well, not a kid. When I was in high school, I would warm up, and it was Pittsburgh. I would warm up outside. I would warm up in the in like in the snow, right? Salt, some some chunks of ice glued to the ground, you know, because all the snow gets mashed down. And I would just do it there, and it was fine. Nice. I figured it out. Yeah, I got all my volume in. I was pretty fast, pretty powerful in high school. I didn't even think about technique. Yeah. I thought I was just run as fast as I could. And honestly, it was pretty effective. <laughs> if yeah. I could do it again though, I wish I would have been measuring everything. Yeah. I For not me, really thought about technique. I just warm up in my garage. Once I'm warmed up, then I go outside. 
What about when you have the skipping and stuff? My backyard. You're doing the backyard? Yeah. Just back and forth? Yeah. Nice. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much why for Oli's. Uh, there was one other thing I wanted Dom to talk about. We could talk about it on the way home, but I watched a really interesting video that he posted on his channel that he showed me. And this is also one of the reasons I like having these guys around. I tend to learn a lot from them uh, and gain a lot of um, just generally, I wouldn't say effective, but like it sheds light on some of the, the things that I've thought about or different ways to teach things or different ways to demonstrate things, different ways that people learned, uh, you know, different concepts naturally. And I think that that's really effective. Like for Dom, you were never coached on how to jump, right? Technically, no. but your technique is beautiful, right? Isaiah is a little bit different. He had to learn how to like have good technique. So, you know, it's like, oh, which one's better? Which one's worse? I don't think there's like an answer like, oh, well, this is better. This is worse. I think it's just like different. I mean, I think it's maybe it is better to naturally learn because you will innately do it without thinking about it, which yeah. means you can just try harder and you're going to jump higher uh, or it sticks better maybe, but that's not always the case for everyone. So some people like Isaiah had to perfect his technique and then he did jump higher as a result. I am also that way. Uh, so that said, you know, when you were learning, what were the, and you put this in the video, right? What were the big concepts that you noticed helped a lot? Yeah, so I made this video about jump technique off too because a lot of people commented like, you have good jump technique. So I was like, might as well just make a video on it. So I just broke down my jump technique and started, and I went backwards. So I started with popping off the ground first. So in my video, it's like the first drill, take like one long step away from the rim, and then you just wanna hop into your jump and then just like practice popping off the ground and then take two steps back for the ne next drill. Wait, from the rim or from your last position? From the last position. So you're so, three steps away from the yeah, rim? Yeah, now three steps. From the rim? Yeah, okay. from the rim. And then that practice is your penultimate. You just want to kind of like get low and push into your jump. So yeah, just check out the video and I'll go through all of it. But yeah. And then you basically got creative with it. And how long would you say you did that? Was it like after you figured out the technique? Because you said you tried um, stuff to figure that out or what? I mean, I've been figuring that out, but I just made the video on it later on. Once people said like, you have good technique, then I was like, oh. But like when you were young, yeah, how I, did you figure that out? I was just watching a lot of NBA players. Like Westbrook, for example, I watched him a lot and then he like sprints into his jump and then I saw the penultimate step that it was longer than the other steps and then he just like violently violently gets off the ground so I just like put those steps together and try to copy NBA players how did you know to like look at that aspect of the of the jump or the dunk um like did you know jump technique existed or was it just kind of because no, like it was mainly just copy what they do like even Zach Levine so I used to jump off one foot for a low rim. I copied his stuff. Just because? Um, just because it looks cool. Because the style looked cool? Yeah. So you were just more just or like, less like stylistically trying to copy them. Yeah, Like basically. pretending you were Russ. Exactly, yeah. Even it wasn't, on, like, it wasn't something you were like, oh, I'm going to work on good technique. Yeah, no. I was like, I want to be like Russ. Did you ever watch the videos back and like say, oh, I look like Russ or I don't? Yeah, so like. Like you I, had a camera as a kid, right? Or your no, iPhone I had my brother. That's my camera. Oh, really? So I said, <laughs> I showed him the Russ video. I did it, and I was like, do I look like him? And, then I just and what kept would repeating. your brother say? Like, if he said no, then I was like, uh, how could I do this or that? And then most of the time he said, yeah, it looks like him. So I was like, all right, I'll stick with it. <laughs> so you naturally like were just like, oh, this looks like it? You never looked in a mirror to try to figure it out or anything? No. Really? No. I didn't even record until like, middle school. Wow. Yeah. How good were you at low rooming when you were a kid? Were you better than Hoop and Nate? Um, I was like him, yeah. I was dunking at church a lot because we had an adjustable rim. Then before and after services, I would just do crazy stuff. Thro <laughs> throw it against the church walls and then grab it. And people were just like, what the heck? Yeah. Why they, is this they kid liked so it. this? They would? Yeah, it was fun. <laughs> like you're like people older than you? Yeah, like the pastors and then all the other students. Wow, dude. This kid was putting on a show at six. Fact. How old were you at that time? I was like 
12, 14, like at church. Just nasty. Yeah. <laughs> I have some videos back then about it. Yeah. Where can I find those videos? Um, in my photos, my old photos. I'll show you. you should, yeah, you should post those. I will. Anyways, that's the video, guys. I wanted Don to share that. I want to talk about Oli's. Uh, we're going to go destroy ourselves in the weight room with upper body. Maybe we'll film on the way home. I don't know. Depends on my mood. Depends on how I'm feeling. Oh, a cop. Great. I love that. Psych. Um, all right. Peace out, guys. Thanks, Don.